All right, guys, lab number 10. This one is going to be using the retroreflective photoelectric proc sensor. Uh, the application for this guy is that we're looking at a gate, and it's similar to like your garage door where you have um, the transmitter that is then sending a light signal over to the reflector, bouncing off the reflector, and then coming back to the receiver. So we can see here that the transmitter and the receiver are both housed in the retroreflective sensor. It goes, bounces off this reflector, it uh, depolarizes the light and comes back. So it's looking for a certain polarization of the light and a certain frequency before it will actually say that there's nothing there. Uh, and then if the object comes in front and blocks the light from getting to that reflector, then it doesn't matter that you have ambient light that's coming to the receiver. It's looking for that specific frequency and for the depolarization of the light. So once it doesn't see that, then it trips it off and sets the, the output of the actual sensor. So the wiring of these guys is all the same. Let's take a look at uh, what we need here. We're going to grab the, the retroreflective sensor. Again, on your sensor, it should say the, uh, the name of it. But if it doesn't, on the back, it will have this part number from Festo, 548649. I'll show you that in a few seconds. And you're going to need the reflector as well. Uh, we're going to make use of that little tiny screwdriver that's in your tackle box and you need the power supply and the light indicator unit. Uh, from our tackle box, it looks like we're going to be grabbing uh, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, and 16. And out of these guys, we're going to see what the retroreflective sensor will be able to sense. Okay, you can fill in all your data from the data sheet working range, light tape, type, adjustment device, operating voltage. They're very similar to uh, the previous sensors that we were looking at. So you're going to fill this guy in and then you're going to mount uh, the unit like this. So you're going to have the sensor right here. And when we take a look at this guy, you'll notice that it's, it looks, it's hard to discern, almost impossible to discern whether it is a retroflector or whether it is the diffuse sensor. So you'll have to look at the part number on the back end. And then on this side, you're going to be placing the reflector. It says that the distance between the retroreflective sensor and our reflector is supposed to be 300 mils. So what you can do is you can grab the, the ruler that's provided for you, and we're gonna measure out 30 centimeters or 300 mils, and that'll give us enough space where we can get the light to go out, hit the reflector, and then come back. So you can see that the application for this is a lot <clears throat> like a lot more distance than what you'd have for the inductive or for the capacitive sensor. Like with this setup, you can easily see like 10 feet away with this sensor versus the inductive sensor that's really just seeing like half an inch in front of it. Okay, as I mentioned uh, just a few seconds ago, the wiring is identical. We're gonna give these guys 24 volts. So we're gonna give 24 volts to the positive 24 volt terminal. Obviously, the common goes over to the common here. And then Q1 is going to be our output. And our output is simply just going to go to the light. The light needs a return, so we're going to tie that light into the same return here. And then we're good to go. Step number five tells us that in addition to that wiring, uh, once we've got it all set up, we're going to adjust the potentiometer on the back with that little tiny screwdriver. And we're going to do like 12 revolutions in a clockwise direction. That's going to give us our maximum sensing distance for this sensor. And then number six, we're going to move the various materials into the beam's path at a right angle and see if we can see whether it's detected or not. So we're going to look at galvanized steel, stainless steel, aluminum, transparent plastic, red, blue, and black plastic. All right, guys, let's go to the lab and take a look at it. sensor and so if we take a look at this guy it looks exactly like the uh, diffuse sensor that we've looked at prior so the way to discern whether this is the correct sensor or not is I put an actual sticker right here telling you this is a ref retroreflective sensor if that's been ripped off by a previous student then we just have to look here focusing and you can see that uh, right here we've got the part number so just go a little bit closer here 548649, that's going to tell us that that is the retroreflective sensor. Okay, very hard to discern this one from the diffuse. 
It said that uh, we have to be 300 mils away from the actual reflector. So I've taken a, a ruler and then just drawn in my 300 mils here. This is an invitation for you to draw in your measurements. It's not an invitation to say Pete sucks or Joe is here 2016. This is a nice clean board. It's not yours. It's the college's. So again, don't put all kinds of pictures on there. We're just putting measurements on there. Okay. Don't do it in a Sharpie. Just do it in uh, a pencil, right? Then if it gets dirty, then I can just quickly clean it up. Okay. Next thing we need is the, uh, the, the reflector here. Again, uh, this is obvious that this is the reflector, but the part number is on the back here. So it can just be your part number right there that tells us that that is the reflector that we're looking for. Now, each of these guys is able to swivel on its base. So I've set my units up uh, where I have the, the sensor here and I have my reflector over here. You could easily have it set up like this. I just like it set up in this fashion, okay? These have a, a little lever here, again, that pushes this cam action. And so that just clips right into the aluminum plate there. And we're roughly being 300 mils away from that. Beautiful. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to wire this bad boy up. So let me grab some wires and we'll wire up our sensors. So wiring is uh, based exactly the same as uh, the other sensors. So what we need to do is we need to provide this guy with uh, 24 volts. So what we'll do is we'll grab the positive. My DC output is right here. So I'm going to put the positive to my 24 volt. And we're work working with 24 volts DC. Then the next thing we're going to do is provide it with the negative here. So the negative goes to there. Beautiful. Okay, so now we got 24 volts to the sensor. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to put the output. The output from your diagram says that Q1 is the output. And so we're going to bring that to a light. So we're putting Q1 to the light. Right, so when this sensor is turned on, it's going to send 24 volts over to our light. But our light needs a common return. So we can grab any of these blues. You'll notice that on your trainer, all these blues are all tied together. It doesn't matter if I grab it here or here or here, they're all the same terminal. And I'm going to bring it back to our source. Beautiful. Okay, let's get these guys a little bit out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Nice. Okay, so now we're all set up. So now this guy has 24 volts. And as soon as we uh, put something in front of it, then it's going to turn on the light. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the, the opposite of what you'd expect here. Some of you have an output where uh, the light is turned on already, whereas mine, it, as long as the, the light is going to the reflector and back, then the light is off. As soon as I block the light, then my output goes higher. Okay, so it depends on the sensor that you have. Uh, some, the light will be on right now, and then if you block the light, the light will go off. Uh, others, it will be the opposite, just like mine. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with uh, with a number five for the galvanized steel. So we're going to grab our tackle box here. Oh, and before we start, I forgot one crucial thing. We've got to uh, take this little kind of this tiny screwdriver known to uh, to man, and we're going to increase the sensitivity or the sensing distance of this unit. So. On the, the back here, let me just take my wires off here so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, that was ridiculously hard. Okay, so on the back of uh, the sensor, you'll notice that there is an LED and so there's a green LED, there's a, a yellow LED, and then just right here, let's see if we can zoom in there. So just right here, there is a very, very small spot there, or potentiometer. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pull this to go clockwise. So don't actually feel around to make sure you're making contact with it. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to increase this, it says like 12 times, right? Eight, zero, five, six, seven, eight, 
12. Okay, that's for the airport. So that's now increased the sens sensing distance of this guy. Um, I've done it with the power, I'm taking my these on off with power on, uh, just because it's harder for me to reset my 24 volt. But if you're doing that, then turn your sensor off for me. Again, my output was Q1, beautiful. Got this bad boy back in, and now we are ready to rock and roll. Nice, okay, so now we need to grab uh, number five from the tackle box. So from our tackle box of units here, uh, we need uh, number five. There we go. Okay, so the first one is the, the galvanized steel here for number five. Let's grab everything at the, the first point. What else do I need? Number six for the stainless. Okay, then I need uh, uh, aluminum, transparent plastic. So the aluminum is number seven. Transparent plastic is number 12. And then I need the red, black, and the blue. The red, black, and the blue. Beautiful. Okay, so now I got everything I need to test this bad boy out. And so, and we're not using the, uh, the unit that grabs, or I'm not using this unit right here. You can try this if you want. You can put that in, in between them. And, but I'm, essentially all we're doing is we're just putting the piece of metal, a piece of plastic in front of the sensor and seeing whether it changes the output of the unit. So first one we're going to start off with is uh, number five. So we'll start off with uh, the galvanized steel here. And so obviously this is a thick piece of metal. There's no way that there's going to be any light going through that guy. So as soon as I put this in front of the sensor, then you can see that the light goes through. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Be careful when you're doing this that in some of them that you're not getting your fingers in front of the actual sensor, right? Because if my fingers in front, then I'd still be making this bad boy work. But obviously right there, it doesn't matter where I put it, it's blocking that light all the way through. So galvanized steel, we get no light going through. The next one is stainless. So obviously no light getting through the stainless. So again, all the way through, we're getting a high output in my case on this sensor. Yours, it might be the opposite. You have the high right here, and then as soon as you put this in, you're getting a low output. But right now, I'm getting zero volts for the light, and then once I place something in front of it, then I'm getting 24 volts for the light. So we had the galvanized, then we had the stainless. The next one is the aluminum, so number seven for the aluminum. Again, there's no light going through this bad boy. So this is fairly intuitive here. Okay, so obviously this guy can pick up any piece of metal, which would be perfect for a gate because as the cars go through, it doesn't matter what type of metal is there, it's obviously going to block the light. Okay. Next one is the transparent plastic. So before we put this in front, obviously um, this you can see through, so the light's probably going to go through here, right? So let's see. We've got no output right now. Put this in front of my sensor, and there's no output whatsoever. Again, be careful that your finger isn't in the way because it's going to give you a false positive. But here, it doesn't matter where that transparent plastic is. The light is going through, hitting the reflector, and then coming back. So it doesn't look like this piece of plastic changes the polarization of that light. Okay? So, saw this saw this, saw this piece of metal, the transparent plastic, it did not change whatsoever. Okay, next thing we gotta do is uh, the red, then the blue, and then the black. Okay, so the red. Okay, so we'll choose it there. Choose it over here as well. Okay, so it looks like it's not going through that red piece of plastic. Let me just make sure my fingers aren't in the way. Doesn't matter where that is, it's still seeing the red plastic. Okay, remember that you need to have your sensitivity really high for this guy in order for that same output to run through here. Okay, the next one we're doing is the blue. Okay, so that blue we can see at any point as well. Beautiful. Okay, and then finally the black. Yeah, it's not going through the black. So the only thing that it did not see 
way and clear piece of plastic, right? So this one right here, I would bet that this, uh, the retroflexive sensor is not a polarized retroflexive sensor um, because a polarized retroflexive sensor might be able to actually see uh, this piece of plastic. But in this case, we're seeing nothing whatsoever. All right, guys, hopefully that gives you a background or basic understanding of the, the retroflexive sensor. It's able to see quite a large distance, right? This is about 10 feet with the sub, that's where this pro works. Um, any dense material is obviously going to block the light and give us an output, uh, but it's limited because it can see through certain types of plastic like this one that's kind of thin. The other advantage of this guy is that it does have the LEDs in the back to show us that it's actually got power and that it's sensing. So right now we've got the green because I've got the reflector that's mounted in the back here. And so it's obviously sensing that reflector. If I put uh, something in front of it then, you can see that it's giving me a yellow LED now, telling me that I have power applied, but it's not actually sensing the reflector. Beautiful. So there's a little bit of diagnostics that can be done with the actual sensor using those LEDs there. Okay, there's the, the black again. And again, with the transparent, uh, it's going all the way through to that reflector and coming back. Okay, if you're get, not getting the right out, same outputs as I am, be careful that your wire hasn't gone in front of the actual sensor like this to give you false positives. So get your wires out of the way. Okay, get them right out of the way of the sensor and then everything should work properly with this guy. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. Every, hope everything's worked out for you. If you have any questions, bring them up uh, next time.